Hi there. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for coming. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. I am Alfonso Maestre, and I am a full-stack engineer uh, working for Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile. And when I was told to introduce the kids this morning um, into the disciplines involved in the creation of a video game in order to guide them to the professional careers they could arrive or achieve, I thought it was great, a, a great idea. And I, and I, uh, well, I was very proud about it. And when they suggested me to give you exactly the same to the adults, I thought, well, why? Maybe everybody is already working on what they, what they like. Don't you? You are? I suppose. And as this is a speech for all type of audience, I would like to know the level, the technical level maybe in the room. So how many of you in the room is a software developer or has ever been a software developer? Not too bad. I'm feeling, I'm feeling at home. So um, let me then introduce with some kind of modifications, what I told this morning to the kids, uh, but now uh, in a different way. First of all, I would like to, to tell you about the, the past of Ubisoft, Mobile Barcelona, where do we come from. After that, what it's supposed to work in the video games in industry, even more coming from the consultancy world, when you are a full stack engineer, you know, from the client side to the database, where all the data is in the underground, and with the magic in the middle. No, it's not magic. We are programmers, not Harry Potter, but uh, we try to do it our best. And what is to work right now at Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile? So, um, about the past of Ubisoft Mobile Barcelona, with a bit of his, his history, uh, first of all, about Ubisoft. Ubisoft began in the mid-80s with uh, Zombie as a distributor of games. And after that, 10 years after, it arrived Ryman. Everybody knows about Ryman, don't you? It's our pet. Our, we are very proud of it. Um, after that, the 3D models arrived because of the G new GPUs, the new models, the new era, and the new or the next gen, next generation of consoles. After that arrived the saga of Assassin's Creed. And Assassin's Wars, yes, the very beginning of the saga. Yeah, uh, games like uh, Just Dance, The Rabbit, and even further in the work of 3D models trying to capture the best of the reality with, with real models. After that, they came uh, games like uh, Far Cry, another saga, and it blew away with the Assassin's Creed saga, uh, arriving to, you know, seven years ago when Ubisoft, the great mother Ubisoft, was interested in us in Barcelona in the Barcelona studio. So, um, first of all, we were Microyox, a little company in Barcelona, just eight friends, maybe even less. After that, we become Digital Chocolate because we were acquired by a greater company. And after that, we became Ubisoft, what we are now, a mobile studio of Barcelona. If you see they are real photographs of the beginnings. Oh, they were so young. Just eight people, eight friends, with a bag, plenty of dreams. He's still working with us. Maybe he's the only one. And uh, <laughs> they were the, the, um, our offices in, in Via Laietana here in Barcelona, but now we are here. Uh, in, uh, near Glorias, you know, you can visit us whenever you want. Do you remember this type of phones? Have you ever had one? 
the first color Nokia. So this is the type of games we, we made for, for them. And they were very lim limited in terms of APIs, in terms of um, powerful. Um, but we tried to do it our best. We use also uh, Java, the mobile edition, but uh, the API was really, really limited and limited. And um, it was really difficult to port a game between different phones. After that, it arrived jobs. And everything changed. Uh, touchable games and a lot of possibilities arrived. So we tried to do it our best again in this new type of platforms. And it was good, it was good for us because it uh, pushed us to work into Facebook games. And that blow with the game. Uh, blew it up again our company in Barcelona uh, with titles like uh, Galaxy Life or um, Battle of Heroes. And that was because Ubisoft was interested in us as a mobile studio in their strategy around, around the world. I told you that every, everything changed once the iPhone arrived. And for the next generation phones, the smartphones, uh, our next title, and it was uh, mm, uh, and, and before and after, was some sort of Pirate Wars. After that, and now we have already in the stores uh, Might and Magic Elemental Guardians. And the other game we produced here and implemented here and drove here in Barcelona is Hungry Dragon. But going back to the main, to the main topic, what is the role? What does a developer do in the video games world? So, well, um, I will tell you a story. It's an anonymous story about, about a Java developer who arrived to the video games. An anonymous one. Yeah, it's me. Um, you know what's the fun thing being a, a developer? A developer, you know, is to deal with not technical people. No, it's not at all. <laughs> so this is not a story about Ubisoft. Yeah, that is it. Uh, it's a story of a full stack engineer who landed into the video games world and discovered a lot of disciplines he had never um, dealt with. Before. So once he arrived, he saw how to develop a game, new concepts like the physics for the animations, behaviors, and the physics law. Uh, once the, you know the players in the water, maybe in the air, right? The graphics, the modeling, animation, the user interface, the interaction, the user experience, uh, how to deal with sounds and interaction with them. Uh, that was the comfortable, the comfortable way, the part. <laughs> the part I like the most, well, this guy liked most. <laughs> because, well, you know, a Java developer, maybe. It's more comfortable with uh, login, security, payments, databases, and interaction with social networks. <sighs> and what about the logic, the business logic? It's not really at the server side, it's not really at the Java side, but you can deal pretty well with client programmers and technical programmers at the very end. And everything together um, makes for you uh, maybe a difficult position where you arrive because you are in the middle. And what can you do there when you are in the middle? Well, first. First of all, discover all these disciplines involved in the development. First of all, is to know, is to learn how to work with designers. You know what a designer is? Someone who draws, no. Someone who implements, no they don't. Who program, no they, they don't program <laughs> at all. Um, 
They define, they define the rules of the game. They think about it. They play a lot and create credible or maybe incredible <laughs> worlds. It's better to be credible in order to, you know, if you want to gain users. And they work mainly with ideas. They bring us as the ideas. They investigate. They mm, describe. They document. They help us or indicate us how to prototype. They sorry, test the prototypes and move again with new ideas. And all this iteration, doesn't it sound familiar for you? Like a waterfall iteration or a something like that. It's different, but at the end, it's the same. So working with designers is not the same for everything. Uh, when the idea, the first idea arrives, a developer, a developer, mm, well, thinks something like this. Well, the designer thinks a bit different. And has a, maybe a different vision of what the documentation is. Uh, no, just kidding. They are really, really meticulous people when it takes to document the features. They are so specific at the so low level that you have to do it your best. And many times, deal with them is a bit difficult, but fun at all. They exist, and they document really well. You have to work with life ops. Do you know what the, what the life events in a game are? How many people here work, how many people here, sorry, uh, play video games once a month, at least? Once a month. Pretty good. Once a week? Once a day? <laughs> More lies. You are cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the life ops team uh, are pure strategy because they have to think mainly in the life events. Life events are all the events regarding to retain, trying to um, improve the retention of people uh, coming back to our game. Imagine a new event for this weekend. If you win in the Tower of Trials, you will get a new reward, a new sword. After analyzing a lot of data, they can think about all these types, these type of events. In this example, we can see the event uh, in Myth and Magic Elemental Guardians, one of our production uh, games. And um, well, at the server side, we have to implement it. We have to deal with it. We have to offer it to different users, targeted, tar targeting in terms of uh, languages, countries, uh, money spent in the game, you know, a lot. They are a small part of our, of our life ops team, and they are really cool. You also have to deal or work with other developers, the client developers, and the tech developers. They are not Java developers at all but they are also programmers. It's a different vision about, about that. We have in Mathematic Elemental Guardians, a previous game, we have a chat, do you know? Uh, a chat in the, in the game. And this is a real story. It happened one month ago. And happened something similar to this. There was a problem because the, the chat was crashing. And, you know, blame the front-ender, blame the server guy, blame the front-end again, blame the server guy. No, blame the front-end. And when it, when it arrives, the QC, the testers, <laughs> you know, they just arrive. And... The chat crashed at all and make the, 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 the whole game to crash. And you know, can you see it? 
in the nickname. It was all about an ampersand in the chat protocol. So, as a programmer, you have you know perfectly what to do when you uh, when you have to deal with a, with a problem, and it's to Google it, Google for it, and maybe arrive to a Stack Overflow or any other. We arrive to Amazon, and this is the only we found a London gym. So we bought it. <laughs> and we also ordered some mixers. <laughs> and yes, it was quality control approved. And, uh, and by the way, we fixed the chat. Yes. But uh, it was funnier <laughs> with the gene. And what about working with these uh, quality control, uh, quality and control uh, guys? They test a lot, so they have to play. Uh, and test, and test, and test. A lot of students, and young people, came to visit us because their opinion is really important for us. Uh, it doesn't matter if the game is funny for us, or it's fun for us. Um, we are not the target of the game. They are, you are. So it's really important for us, your opinion. So we deal really uh, close to them. And once we have their opinions, we iterate and iterate and change things again. And we came to this waterfall, agile waterfall. Uh, <laughs> iteration. And yes, more iterations. <laughs> Does it sound familiar for you? <laughs> Can be. We also have to deal with artists. Well, I'm, I'm telling, working with artists, dealing with artists, what do you prefer? In my case, some days I have to work with them. Other days I have to deal with them. The same happens for you. Um, so, at the very beginning, uh, in, the, in the work of the artist, we find the designers again with the concept artist. They are the first in the chain. After that, the, the different specializations of artists arrive with modeling, textures, uh, animating the models, and after that, the programmers integrate it. Not the Java programmers, but we have to deal with it. And we have to deal with them when we prototype and prototype again and iterate again prototyping when we deal with them in terms of user experience, user interface, and when we party hard with them. They are really cool. Really cool. We also work with data analysts. Oh, to, to build a, to, to, to create a video game is not as easy as a full stack engineer could thought at the beginning. And the data analyst uh, measures and studies all the, all the KPIs. Some of them are the daily uh, active users, or the daily new users, or the average revenue per user, or the average revenue per payer user, or the retention, how many people comes back uh, one day before, three days before, uh, next week, and so on. And they also look for cheaters, maybe general behaviors, or they just study the requests of the designers in order to, whoa, what about the next future or the new future we are trying to? Is it cool? Is people playing it? Is people really enjoying it? And we also work for, with us, with other server programmers and other Java programmers. And a lot of you were technicals, right? Technical people. So this is another real case. It happened some years ago. Uh, because some of you, uh, are, I'm sure, remember the, the acid, uh, atomicity, um, acid? atomicity uh, 
atomic consistency, um, isolation, and durability for the database. Well, it also happens with the consistency when you have a cluster, because all the nodes have to have the, exactly the same data. Happens with the availability, because the data has to be accessible even if a node of the cluster is not present or is not up. And the partition tolerance. Um, everything has to work uh, at the final end, even if the nodes are not communicated between them. So you know, uh, we decided to choose a new technology. New technologies, you know, new frameworks. Some of them vaporware, some of them, well, cool, it's all. And we, but for uh, Apache Cassandra, and we made a lot of load tests. A lot of them. A lot of them. Not with the real case, but made a lot of them. And we have, we had, um, well, all these operations in order to do with the Cassandra database. The read all, the read quorum, the read one, write all, write quorum, wet one. More or less is understandable that the write quorum is that has to be read, written into the majority of, or, or, of the nodes, and the read quorum is that the data has to be in the majority of the nodes. Well, imagine uh, five nodes. This is a quorum. Three of them. If the data exists in three of them, there is a quorum. It happens to when writing, it happens when, when reading. So we had three options in order to choose. The write all and read one, write quorum and read one, and, ri and write quorum and read quorum. Uh, well, the first one, uh, involved to write in all the notes, so it didn't seem pretty efficient. The second one was to uh, write quorum and read one, but if you write quorum and read, uh, if you write in three of them, but when you want to access to the data, you access to one node, and one of them still doesn't have the data, it's not consistent. And the third option was the write quorum and read quorum. And it seemed legit. Do you know what happened? When the real data arrived, when we went to production, and when we put the game in Facebook, it was just great. And this is the real image of, I don't know, panic, desolation, and uh, yeah, panic was a <laughs> the real world. Um, database just crashed, went down. When it comes to write all the JSONs, the, the enormous, the huge JSONs, it had to be written, it just collapsed at all. Well, you could put more iron inside, improve the hardware. Ah. <laughs> Nothing changed. Even with more RAM, more CPUs, more, I don't know. It, didn't, it was exactly the same if you went vertically or horizontally when scaling, it just crashed. Well, was one of our epic fails because to deal with us, is somehow, sometimes, also ah, a bit particular, a bit difficult. But, well, what is to work at the end at Barcelona Mobile uh, Studio? It's not bad at all. We are nearly 80 people right now uh, managing uh, three different games and, you know, play more, make more, etc., etc. You know, we, we try to party hard. Yes, the one in the middle, it's me. And um, the white one, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's cool to work there. Uh, people is cool, everything is cool, and maybe it seems it's difficult to deal with, with everybody. No, it's not. It's not at all. And this is a little example.
¿Qué te gusta de trabajar en Ubisoft Barcelona? Hay muchos profesionales y realmente cada día aprendes un montón de cosas de gente nueva. The free fruit we get every week. Es uno de los ambientes de oficina más relajados en los que he estado. Esto prácticamente parece un banco. Eh, bueno, well, la ambiance un poco multicultural, uh, tres lenguas principales, inglés, francés, español. Me pregunto qué debo decir de la imagen. El nivel de los artistas es muy alto. The events, the cultural ones, are super cool, uh, especially the museum ones. When we have to go to the arts and checking, you know, that kind of stuff. I love them to go with the, with the friends in the studio, checking art, checking museum. I mean, I love them. We are Barcelona boy. And this is mainly what we do in Barcelona in the Ubisoft Barcelona mobile studio. I would also like to show you uh, three more videos in order to, well, in order you to know uh, what we were working on and what we are currently working on. And the first one is about Sansor, Pirate Wars. And this was uh, the first game who changed everything after the the first iPhone operation. So. This is Sandstorm, Pirate Wars. The next one, uh, currently in the, um, in the Play Store for, uh, and, the, and the Google Play for Android and, and iOS, is Might Magic, Elemental Guardians. And the other one, currently also in the, in the store, is the Hungry Dragon from the Hungry Shark Saga. And this is a bit of it.
So the three of them are mobile games uh, developed here in Barcelona in the Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile Studio and you can play them in your iPhone, in your Android and enjoy it. So um, after that, uh, if you have any question, it would be a pleasure to answer you. So thank you very much for coming. Is there any question, maybe, about our studio? I try to explain it. Questions? Everything. Any question? No. Is there? No? Okay. no? It's great, if not, but there's another thing. <laughs> uh, I would like, as this is maybe the, the final speech or the last one, I would like to thank the organization of the event and I would ask you to give them an applause because they really deserve it. So please, everybody clap in their hands because they deserve it. Thank you very much for another, another year of this great conference. Thank you very much for inviting us. And thank you very much to everybody for being here. You can uh, give also feedback to this speech in your uh, phones in your application or even in the tablet at the, at the door. Thank you very much again for coming. Thank you.